Unit 9, Period 9, Section 4, um, discussing the presidency of George W. Bush from 2000 to 2008. Uh, one of the major points in his presidency was um, the attack on the United States by terrorists on September 11, 2001. Following that attack, George W. Bush called for a war on terror. One of the first things that he did was to form a new cabinet position called the Department of Homeland Defense. The purpose of this was to organize all of the police, uh, first responders, fire departments, military, to be able to help them through technology and through organization to be able to communicate with each other more effectively so that future attacks upon the United States could be halted. This included hiring federal agents at all of our airports to uh, monitor activity into and out of the airports. So if you visit the airports today, you'll see signs like this up warning travelers based on uh, creditable threats that the United States government has by um, terrorists. One of the first things that George W. Bush did was follow in the footsteps of his father, George H. W. Bush, and realized that Iraq was a threat to the United States. Iraq was run by a dictator named Saddam Hussein, who uh, had weapons of mass destruction or was accused of having weapons of mass destruction by the United Nations. The United Nations warned him multiple times to allow them to enter his country and monitor and to see if he was developing weapons of mass destruction and he refused or did not allow inspectors to come into his country and check for items like this. And so that raised curiosity by countries like the United States and its allies that Saddam Hussein did indeed have either nuclear weapons or weapons capable of delivering nerve agents or other uh, chemical weapons. It was also a second reason why the United States wanted to intervene in Iraq was um, Saddam Hussein was leading a genocide campaign against a minority in his country called the Kurds. The Kurds had been pushed almost entirely out of his country and were uh, refugees on the border with Turkey and evidence came to light that Saddam Hussein used Soviet era armored helicopters to deliver chemical weapons and which killed a bunch of these Kurds that you see in refugee camps like this killed a bunch of them. And the third reason for the United States entry into, into the war in Iraq was to remove this man from power. And so a war was fought in Iraq by the United States and its allies in which they removed Saddam Hussein from power, captured Saddam Hussein, his own government tried him, convicted him, and then hung him. The second part of the war on terror was against uh, terrorist training camps in the country of Afghanistan. Afghanistan had been fighting against foreign invaders for a long period of time and the tribes, local tribes all over Afghanistan that had been fighting against these invaders were called the Taliban. At one point the United States was actually allied with the Taliban but now in the eyes of these Taliban the United States was the invader and had been harboring training camps of other terrorists in their own country. George W. Bush sent United States military forces into Afghanistan to wrest control from both Taliban controlled areas as shown on this map in uh, pink with the blue circles and areas of Afghanistan that were under Islamic State control or what you may know of as ISIS. This war is far from over. This war is continuing. United States forces are still located and occupying Iraq 
and there are certain cities in Iraq that are still under ISIS control and there are certain areas of Afghanistan that are still under Taliban uh, and or ISIS control. And so the United States, along with other European nations and Middle Eastern allied nations, helping in this effort to uh, rid the world of this form of terrorism.